All right, in today's video, we're going to talk about setting up tools or describing the tools you're going to use in a program for Herco's WinMax version 11 lathe software. So if we go to the input screen, hit the tool review button, that's going to show us a list of all the tools that we have described in the control. Then we're going to click on the tool setup button. That's going to take us into the individual pages for the tool setup. So let's say we're going to set up tool number three. So we literally type in tool three for our tool number. That's going to create a blank um, slate for us to start describing tools from. First of all, we have station number. So if I set up tool number three today and it's in station number three or pocket number three on the, on the turret, and I run that job and then a couple weeks from now I come back and I want to use tool three again but it happens to be in pocket one because I've been using that for my main turning tool or something. I can come in here in my tool setup and change which station it's in. That way I don't have to re-describe the tool, I don't have to retouch off everything. I can use the geometry offsets and so forth from tool three but it will be in pocket one. So it's usually going to default to the same number as the tool number. I'm not going to change that now. Again, it would be a very, very special circumstance where I would do that. Next, we have type. If I pull down type, I have all the different kinds of tools that I could describe this tool as, such as grooving tools, cutoff tools, things like that. We're going to do a simple uh, turning tool. So I'm going to select turning. I can put a comment for what kind of what tool this is. Maybe I want to put some information about the insert or I want to put in there that this is my roughing tool, finish tool, or whatever. This would be a comment that I want the operator to be able to see. Next would be our max depth of cut. I'm going to put 100 thou. This will be per side, and it will be the maximum depth you will allow that tool to go when I try to program. And again, that's per side. So this would be 200 thousands off the diameter would be the max. The next is the tool offsets. So in the geometry page, I've got a list of geometry offsets that this tool will reference. The one that it defaults to should be the same as the tool number. That keeps things very even and, and easy to follow. Later on, if I want to use this same tool to control two different uh, bearing journals, for example, and I need them both to be independently controllable because it's a very tight tolerance, then I can, in that programming block, say I'm going to use tool three geometry offset number 13 or something like that and be able to control those independently. Here in the main tool setup, we should leave that offset number the same as the tool number. It just makes things easier. The tip radius and the geometry um, uh, angle that we see here, the little image, the circle with the dot in the middle of it, we're going to talk about that when we get to the geometry offsets page here in a second. So we're going to skip those for now. They're grayed out anyway. I can't do anything with them. Again, that's done on a different page. Here we're going to put our feet per minute and or inches per rev, what speed we want to be able to run this. So let's say we're going to put 650 surface feet. You can see that that will then allow me to pick clockwise or counterclockwise, which direction do I want the spindle to turn when this tool comes in the spindle. Basically, is this a right-handed or a left-handed tool? Is it mounted right side up or upside down for chip control? That's going to be determined, or that's going to determine which direction I want the spindle to run. And we view the spindle from sitting on the tailstock, or on the headstock. If I was sitting on the headstock, looking towards the tailstock, that is going to be my clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. What is the inches per rev? Let's say we do five thousandths per revolution. And again, this is just going to be a default that automatically gets put in the speeds and feeds in the block when I call this tool. So I can change that at any time. Here are our options for coolant. We have off, primary, which is our flood coolant. Secondary would be a uh, high, high pressure coolant system if you had it, or if you wanted to turn on both here, you could do that. We're just going to use primary coolant, which is the basic flood coolant that comes through the, the uh, turret. Now we have the insert shape. We said it's a turning tool, so it's going to limit the, the options we have in this pull-down list to just turning tools, but we have all of the common ones you can come with. with. 
uh, 35 degree diamonds, 55, 80 degree diamonds. We've got hexagon, round, circle, uh, squares, things like that. We're just going to say this is a basic 80 degree diamond or a CNMG type insert. Next, it wants to know the size. Now, some of this is used for gouge protection if we turn that on and some of it is just used for graphics so you can see what the size of the tool looks like. We also would be able to see, for example, if this was a tool that was pointed straight down, had an 80 degree tilt on it, and we came over and ran into a shoulder, if we, if we select the correct size here, graphics would show that tool running into that shoulder, for example. We size this by the inscribed circle. That is the circle that you see here, the little black circle. If you don't know what that is, you can go by the number of inserts. For example, a CNMG 432, the number four is the size insert, and I can simply select that here from the number four. That will automatically put in that half inch inscribed circle for us. The next is the lead angle. So most turning tools, if this is a shoulder, they're not straight up and down against that. They tilt away three to five degrees. Five degrees is what I normally use. And that way when that tool comes over and hits that shoulder, we still have a little clearance so we can come up that shoulder and create that flat surface. Again, it's usually five degrees. And if you are looking at from the camera towards me, anything to the right or counterclockwise would be a positive tilt angle. We're going to tilt away from that shoulder. So if I'm moving this way, we're going to tilt away from that shoulder to your right, which would be a negative move. So we're going to put a negative five degrees in there. It's almost always a negative degree angle because we want to tilt that away from the chuck or the surface that we're turning towards. The color, just like on the mill, um, it's going to sequentially pick the next available color in the um, chart for this particular tool. If we wanted to force it to something, we could pull that down and select whatever tool we wanted or whatever color we wanted this tool to be. Now we said we're going to come back to this information here. So if I go back here and highlight the depth of cut, it opens up more options along the soft keys here. And I'm gonna to go to the geometry offsets page. This is where when we finally go to touch off the tool, our tool length in X and in Z will, will be here. This is what we use to measure the tool and get it into position in reference to part zero or for cutting on size. Here's the tool nose radius. We use the example of CNMG 432. That means that that would be a 31 thousandths radius on the corner. And if you don't know what that is, if you know it's a number two, which is in CNMG 432, that last number dictates what the corner radius is, we can select that radius from here and pick exactly what it is. Most people just put in 31 thousandths. It's actually 31 thousandths and two tenths, not that big a deal, but that will automatically put that in here. Now the orientation is the last thing that we have to set. <clears throat> the way I think of the orientation is, how is this tool going to approach the part? So if you're looking at, at this tool and it's tilted away, coming in from the turret towards the, towards the spindle, it's going to come in and approach from this angle, kind of bottom and left. So I would select this icon right here and that's gonna give me the correct orientation. If this was a boring tool, I would use the upper left because it would be boring and going into the chuck like that. Uh, threading tools might be internal or external here, drills, things like that. So that's how I view it. I think of how is that tool going to approach the part and that's typically how I pick the orientation. So now if we go into a block that I've programmed using tool number three, it filled in all the information here, brought in the depth of cut, things like that. And I can go ahead and draw that now and you'll see that that tool looks like an 80 degree diamond with the correct size, correct angle. And my graphics now should depict exactly what I'm gonna see on my part.